G'day guys, in the solar intake workshop, we've got another big one in here. So we're putting in another three KVA inverter, another van with over a thousand watts of solar, and another van with 660 amp power of lithium. We've also got two 30 amp DC DC chargers in there. Let's go take a look. We've got this next gen caravan and we're doing something a little bit different. We're actually gonna be removing the factory battery management system, which will require us to replace the pump switch, put a fuse block in for the existing loads, as well as replace the water tank sensors. And what this lets us do is run a whole Victron system top to bottom. We're not gonna be running through any factory gear. So what this does for the customer is increases reliability for one, because you're not relying on two separate battery management systems to both do their job at the same time. We've deleted the factory one, and we're just relying on that Victron touchscreen now to tell you your water tank levels, your battery capacity, everything all at one point. So it makes for that much, much more finished installation, a nicer look, and of course increases reliability because you're running purely through that Victron gear. So what I'll do is I'll hand you over to Vince, he'll give you a bit of a run through and you can see what we've done. So we're calling this big system the Mad Big 4000P. It's one of the bigger electrical systems that were fitted in a caravan before. It's got all of this equipment here. So we'll start with a 3 kVA inverter that also works as a 120 amp mains charger, absolutely massive capacity. We've got a Lynx distributor, Lynx BMS, servo on a touch 70 display screen that you can monitor everything from. They've got the two big 330 amp hour Victron lithium batteries. We've got three solar regulators going in, one's for a portable panel, the rest for the panels on the roof. Two DC to DC chargers to handle the vehicle's alternator. And then we're gonna fit a heap of solar up on the roof. So we'll aim for somewhere around 800, 900 watts. Should be more than enough than what these guys need to do. So as you can see in the front bit of this caravan, we've got the original battery management system just there. Um, that handles all of the loads inside the caravans, your lights, your pump, your solar, and your auxiliary charging from your vehicle as well. That takes your water tank sensors too and a display monitor inside. We'll be actually removing that, adding all of our own Victron equipment, water tank sensors, solar regulators, DC chargers, adding two 12-way fuse blocks here to get rid of it. So there's no room for error in the future. It's all Victron compatible. So here we are inside Nev's next gen caravan. Uh, basically the power system that they had in here originally wasn't doing what they wanted it to. He's given us free reign to fit a mad big 4000p Victron power system underneath the bed here. We've got all this room to work with. Um, basically that's where all your batteries, your solar chargers, your DC chargers, etc., are gonna go under there. We'll drill some holes, add some fans in there so there's plenty of ventilation everywhere. Customers also asked us to fit a self I go so that'll boost their mobile reception while they're on the road. And then we'll also have a touch 70 display screen. They'll be able to monitor absolutely everything, all their charge rates, their discharges, how much power they're using on 240, how much power is coming in from the car. They'll all be able to monitor that off the screen that we'll put somewhere nice and easy for them to access. So after this job's done, there won't be much in the caravan that we haven't changed over. We're using all the best quality gear on the market. It's all reliable when it comes to the water tank sensors or your solar panels, all accurate monitoring so that they can just hit the road with no worries at all. I'd better get stuck into it. Here's something I'm really excited to show you guys. Check out how we're gonna fit this awesome power system. What I've done is I've cut a laminate white board to size. We've put some um, timber supports in underneath to support that board with everything on top of it. We've laid out all of the components to where everything will ventilate the best and work the best when it comes to wiring it all up. The batteries will be recessed inside the board so they won't be able to go anywhere. The inverter's got plenty of room for ventilation around it. We've got our two DC chargers side by side as well as the regulators below that. That one there handles the portable panels. We've got our battery protecting our Servo GX as well. Um, what we'll do is we'll figure out where everything needs to go. We'll take the board out. We'll have it all cut perfectly on the CNC router so that we can run the cables through and underneath. You won't see any of that, but still everything that you need to access is still on top, um, easy enough to get to if you need to. The whole reason we go to all the effort is to make everything look better than factory, make it look customized to suit the caravan that we're putting it in. The system's designed to be in here forever, so we wanna make the best job that we can. So here we are on the roof of this next gen caravan. Basically, we've finished all the power system inside underneath the bed. Now it's time to fill the roof up with as much solar as we can get up here. Originally, there was two solar panels up here already. On these brackets, we won't be able to use those because they don't suit our size panels. So we'll end up removing those. And we've run some new cables up on the roof as well to handle all the solar panels that we put up there. So we've used PV1F. Reason we've run new cables instead of using the original is it looks like you've got 
plenty of 8mm cable up here, but it joins somewhere in the roof and then down at the regulator we only end up with one 8mm cable that won't be enough to take all the panels that we're going to put up here. So hence why we've run our new cables. You'll see we've got a self go antenna there as well. Um, that's got to be mounted as far away from the indoor antenna and that's just to boost the customer's mobile reception while they're out on the road. So what I'll do is I'll clean the roof up, measure, see exactly how much we can get up here, screw and glue and test it and off we go. So here we are guys, this is the fully completed install in this next gen caravan of the Mad Big 4000P system we're calling it. Uh, basically all Victron components that were fitted here, there's nothing else, no other brands in the caravan when it comes to the electrical equipment, it's all Victron. Um, we removed the BMS from the front, front boot, we'll speak about that a bit later, but um, basically everything else has ended up under the bed here. We've got massive battery bank, 660 amp hours of lithium there which runs over to the BMS, and then also the Lynx distributor, which works as our fuse block and the bus bar for all our negatives underneath. All the positives come on top. We've got mega fuses for the inverter, a mega fuse for the DC chargers, for the solar regulators, and for the battery protect. If ever there is an issue, red light will come on when the fuse blows, and it'll come up on the servo display screen, and then it'll actually tell you exactly what fuse is blown, whether it's for the inverter, um, no digging around, figuring out what cable does what or what fuse does what. It's just nice and easy for the customer. Below those, we've got two 30 amp DC chargers handling the power from the vehicle's alternator straight to these batteries, 60 amps all up. 100-30 and 100-50 solar regulator. This one handles five 130 watt panels on the roof, wide in parallel. And this one handles the two 200 watt panels on the roof. So a total of 1,050 watts all up. Um, pushing 70, 80 amps into the, into the battery bank. Uh, below that, we've got a little, another 100-20 solar regulator. That's just for a little portable panel input. So we'll put a little blue Anderson plug off to the frame for the customer for when he's, say, parked in the shed, he can't use the solar on the roof. He'll run his um, portable, portable panel and plug it into that Anderson plug and keep the batteries topped up. Um, and you'll see below that, we've also got a 65 amp battery protect that handles all the power to all of your loads in the caravan, your lights, uh, fans, pump, all that sort of stuff. If ever there's an issue that's gonna damage the batteries, that will cut out and prevent that from happening. So it's a, a safety feature. Obviously we've got the big three KVA inverter, works from 12 volt and it also pushes 120 amps in off main. So as soon as you plug into your power point on the outside, that's charging those batteries at 120 amps. Absolutely massive. Um, we've got the Servo GX, that basically connects to our servo display screen and that helps us monitor everything so we can see exactly how much solar is coming in, exactly how much DC power is coming in, exactly how much power we're using from the from the aircon, um, from all your 240 volt appliances. You can monitor, monitor everything individually. We've had a white laminate board cut out on the CNC router and then we've mounted everything to it to keep ventilation, keep um, everything looking nice and neat keep the wires flowing easily underneath, um, drop that board on top. If ever you did need to get to the underneath, it's just a matter of pulling that front off, nice and easy, not that you should have to. And we've also put three vents in too, so one on the front there, and then two either side, one with a 12 volt van to blow the hot air out. So that's covering everything underneath the bed. Let's go and take a look at the control panel. As you can see, we've installed this GX Touch 70 display screen up here. Um, some spots are just impossible to get to in a caravan, so we've managed to put it up here for them. We've run a cable up behind the fridge, still on a nice and easy to get to spot. Um, basically, the customer can monitor everything to do with their battery system off this one screen. Up here, we've got AC loads, so when we switch the microwave on or the aircon on, we can see exactly how much watts we're using from those 240 volt appliances. Um, we've got the PV charger there. Obviously, we're parked in a shed at the moment, so we're not gonna see any power coming from that, but that'll tell you exactly how many watts are coming from your solar panel. Um, DC power, that's how many watts we're using from our loads at the moment, so things like our lights, um, appliances in the caravan. Our battery percentage is at 50%. Also, once plugged into mains power, you'll be able to see how many watts are coming in, charging your battery bank. Um, and you can also adjust your AC current limit to suit a generator or to suit whatever 240 volt input you've got. The inverter can also be turned on and off via this display screen. 
and up in this overhead cupboard. Obviously, I spoke about earlier, we removed their original battery management system from the front boot, and we've just put a 12-way fuse block in there. Originally, that did have a display screen with things like your tank sensors, your battery voltage, um, and even a little switch for your pump. They weren't very accurate at all. That's why we've gotten rid of it. And now we've got a separate switch for your 12 volt pump up there. And also we've added a system switch so that when the van is parked up in storage, everything can be isolated via that system switch. Nice and easy. Righto, so like I said, there's not much that these customers didn't get. We've also mounted a cell fire go for them in this overhead cupboard, nice and neat and tidy out of the road. And that will help boost the customer's mobile reception whilst they're traveling. Vince and the boys have done a fantastic job in here. They've spaced it all out perfectly. Now, a couple of common questions I get from customers is one, how much space is it gonna take up under my bed and how much space do each of the components need? Obviously, we've taken up the whole under bed area in this particular system because we were after maximum performance. Depending on what the customer needs, we actually can cramp this stuff together a bit more, put some more fans in to put it in a smaller area. But the idea with this system was, like I said, maximum performance. So we've left exactly the required amount of space between each unit that we need to for them to all run at their capacity. And obviously, Vince has installed those temperature controlled fans in here as well. So with this system, you might have seen some of our other videos where we've done like 3000 watts of alternator charging, upgraded alternators, that sort of thing. And this one, what we've done is we've just put two 30 amp DC to DCs in here, and they're set to throttle back depending on what the input voltage is. So this customer's towing it with a 79 series Land Cruiser, and he's already got a Red Arc DC to DC under his bonnet. So it's not gonna be able to supply current to all of these three DC to DC chargers at once. What these units will do instead is when that's charging under the bonnet, they'll throttle back because they're not getting the maximum amount of voltage here. And once his underbonnet battery is full, these will actually ramp up. And if he was to tow it with, I don't know, a big American truck or something that actually can supply the full 60 amps of current, it'll give the full 60 amps of current. We've run a big 32 mil wire into here right from the starter battery. So there's not gonna be any issues with voltage drop or anything like that, which is one of the most common problems we see on these DC-DC chargers, not running heavy enough wire. Even 16 mil, which is a very common choice, would be sufficient for one, but certainly isn't sufficient for two. And short of going a higher voltage setup, this is the best way to achieve a solid amount of DC-DC charging, as well as that thousand watts of solar. I can't see this customer running out of power, that's for sure. These two 330 amp hour batteries, very, very small for what they are. And this is because obviously they use an external battery management system that we've wired up here. There's a few benefits to this, such as when the batteries go flat, it can wake itself up automatically. And in the event of a high voltage scenario, they'll actually cut off the charges and leave the loads on. So there's a few reasons you'd go a Victron system like this, but I suppose I just wanted to talk about why we've spaced it out so much. And I think it looks pretty sweet too, you've got to admit. Now, how's that for a sweet installation? Now, obviously you don't have to remove the factory battery management system. We like to though, because it does make for a much more factory sort of finish. You haven't got old screens in there that are giving you wrong information. You've just got the one point of call, makes for a very clean installation, increasing the reliability. Regardless of the size of the system, whether it be lithium, AGM, whatever type you're after, give us a call at Solar Inside Bundaberg, and we'll get you sorted.